I'm good. Hello, GodelCon. Hello, people in the internet. Shout out to everyone watching around the world. Um, my name is Mateis. I'm from Rock Knight. And today I wanted to share something less technical, uh, a little bit about me. I've been uh, in game development for about six years. Started using Godot uh, two years ago. Been streaming game development live on Twitch for about two years as well. Since last year, we started a three hour game jam every weekend. So I'll be happy to, to talk about all these things uh, later on as well. But today I wanted to share something that I found interesting and useful. So I thought that other people might find it useful as well. And it's a new concept that I, uh, I learned about while researching for our next project. So I'm going to talk about general stages of uh, game development, a little bit about our next project, and then about two concepts, vertical slice and visual vertical slice. So I'm going to clear up some confusions there and talk about how we decided to use visual vertical slice for our project. I'm going to refer to Juan here. Uh, he has an article, I think it's, it's a bit older article, and he talks about his experience in game development. Uh, he has like over 20 years of experience and he's been through all the stages. And uh, he just uh, gave like general guidelines and I suggest people to read it. I'll leave a link here, but I'll also post uh, the link in the chat on YouTube uh, so you can find it uh, quicker. But basically, uh, the stages are, you first have to think, is your idea uh, viable? Is it worth making the game? Like, is there like audience that could play it? Uh, so you have to make a decision. Do you commit for this project? And the next step would be to create a prototype. It's something that you can test and just use placeholders to see if the gameplay uh, works. And then you can give this to your audience or some focus group uh, to test the game and see if, uh, if it is fun. Because games have to be fun, right? Then the next step would be vertical slice. Um, with a prototype, you could already approach investors or maybe publishers. Um, but it, it would be a little bit harder co to convince them uh, to become part of your project. But with the vertical slice, I'm going to talk about it more later as well. Uh, but it's pretty much make a level with final assets so that uh, the person could get the full experience of the game. And we're going to come back to it. Then uh, once you have vertical slice and you have presented it, for example, to publishers and investors, you get funding uh, to work on your alpha. An alpha is almost ready game, um, but you know there's still some functionality that you have to add. And once you have done that, then you can move on to beta, which is uh, all, pretty much ready game, but just needs polishing. And then as Juan uh, said in his article, I didn't know about this, but then there's gold, which means that your game is polished and, be, and ready to be published. And that's the next step. And then you repeat this. <laughs> so that's general, how you would approach um, a commercial game development, but uh, not always in real life it, it works that way. So I'm going to share our experience. Um, we started thinking about our next project a couple years back, so we actually are already through the is it viable phase. We believe it is. We uh, did some market research. It's a game that we want to make. It's a game that we feel like our team can make. Um, and we already kind of have an idea about the gameplay. It's going to be a turn-based strategy game, similar to Heroes of Might and Magic, or Disciples, if you have heard about it. But these games are set in a fantasy world, whereas we wanted to make it in a sci-fi setting, like something futuristic. Um, here is like one of the first uh, concepts uh, that we have made visually uh, to get the idea, like it's a little bit more glowy and, and cyberpunkish. And we have come to a point where According to, to the guideline or the, uh, the, uh, how to make our dream game, we would have to make a prototype. But <laughs> that's where the real life comes in. Because we, we don't have resources at the moment to make a prototype. We could make concept art. We already started working uh, on stream overlay game, which uh, you saw a little bit uh, in Poznan, those who were there. Uh, we created some character concepts, so we would be ready to make a prototype. But right now, because the gameplay is quite ambitious, um, and it would be a bit risky at the moment to work on the prototype, and our resources, our programming resources, 
are taken. So we have to find another way, what to do. And if we come back to vertical slice, um, a cool analogy that someone in the chat uh, wrote was, it's like a cake. Uh, you can cut it vertically and see all the layers, right? And um, uh, as I said, it could be one level, for example. And that's vertical slice, right? but that's also gameplay, uh, like something people can experience. But as I mentioned just a couple seconds ago, we cannot create gameplay at the moment. But we also don't want to sit on our asses. We want to keep working on the project and develop it. And since it's a, it's, it's a little bit a bigger project, like we have, for example, planned to have like 150 characters, like a bunch of items and environments. It's like where to even start from? Like this is going to be uh, the biggest project in our lives, right? So we tried to approach it responsibly and research what is out there. And uh, we uh, found this concept called visual, visual vertical slice. It's, it's mouthful. <laughs> it's hard to say. And um, this, yeah, it has to be, pretty much it has to look like it's a game. It's a ready game, but it's not playable. It's something that uh, is in the engine, rendered, and, and it looks like a game, and you can, you, kind of, you can present this game to someone, but like, people can't play it. And we thought, hmm. This is something interesting. Uh, we could use it to flesh out better the visual direction of our game, to better understand how the game looks, how it works. And if we do this, if we touch back to the previous talk in uh, Godelcon in Poznan, we said that for those TriJam games, uh, for three-hour games, uh, we use a, a method where we create as much as we can with assets, and then the programmer has to think a bit less um, how to make everything work. He already sees visually how things work. So with this method, we thought, yeah, we could also achieve this goal. The programmer sees how the thing should look like, how the designer has imagined it, and then you can uh, implement from there. And the first place where I heard about this concept was actually from a uh, video, a Unity conference, where they presented it, um, how they use it in their team. Uh, they are a bigger team, they use this concept to uh, pitch an idea for their like management uh, for the games and uh, usually they are the best artists working on it and just uh, putting it together quickly, as quick as they can to sell the idea of the game. Situation, it's, uh, it's not the case, we already uh, know that we want to make this game, so I'm going to talk about it a bit uh, more, how we approach it. But yeah, basically, uh, you set the visual direction here. You think about the story. Yeah, like you create the story, you present it, um, you go through those stages of uh, creating that visual impact, and this uh, visual vertical slice, it has to set the mood of the game. Um, I, again, as I mentioned, it has to be in the engine, like it works in the engine. It's not just a cinematic video. Uh, so there are some of those implementations. Uh, so it says the narrative uh, and another interesting thing is that uh, they suggest using already made assets uh, maybe something you can find on asset store just to put it uh, together as quickly as you can and they said that they do it in like one and a half months to two months so not to spend too much resources and you can already show it to your management or your investors and and uh, see what they think. Is this game worth investing and working um, for? So yeah, and, and this would, in our case, go before actually creating prototy prototype and vertical slice. So it's a, we a step we can do before. I don't know uh, how much it will help in the future. Probably creating vertical slice would also be easier. But for us, it solves problems like we didn't have art direction before, so we can work on this. But we can figure it out. Um, we we are not that experienced in um, in, in uh, 3D, um, as for example, we are experienced in programming in our team. So we also can develop workflows, um, try things out, and we we can do a lot of research and experimenting with this approach. And also, now that we'll have this visual vertical slice, it will be easier to present to other people. As I mentioned, we do uh, live streams on Twitch. So for example, someone comes and asks, oh, what's the project you're working on? So from here, we can already present 
um, our visual vertical slice and they can better understand what is it that are, we're working on. Maybe it's something that they're interested in and they're going to stick around and want to learn more. And that's actually uh, another thing that, to mention that, yeah, it has to create the feeling for audience that they want to find out more. And furthermore, we think that this will help us uh, to plan the project better because we'll have gone through these steps of creating some assets. We'll know how long approximately it takes. We'll know some pitfalls. We'll know places where to optimize. Um, and to refer back to Poznan again, uh, Alex from GameChuck, they're working on an awesome game in Godot, uh, Trip the Arc Fantastic. And they uh, mentioned that in their work, uh, they make prototypes of mechanics, of uh, little implementations. Uh, they basically make a dirty version of, let's say, running. They try it out, how it works, how it feels. They learn uh, from that experience working on it, what are the pitfalls, and then they make the actual implementation. And we discussed last time in Poznan that this is actually a very cool way to approach it uh, to make a uh, better quality project, product, right? And we thought we could do this uh, with assets as well. And this is our approach of this visual vertical slice. We're trying out things, uh, making a character, what steps do we have to go through, uh, how does it look like when you put, let's say, in a Godot, what we can improve. So this is not going to be one and a half or two months or even three months project for us. It's going to be a bit longer. And I'm going to. Also, like again, there are some links to the game chuck that I'm going to post, and I'm going to show you where are right now, where we are right now, uh, <laughs> with this visual vertical slice. It's still rough, <laughs> but it's the progress. Like so, you can actually see in progress how the how it looks like when it's not the actually finished uh, design. Oh, it works. So yeah, uh, there's the main screen. Uh, you can so this is made in Godot with animations. Uh, and just uh, sprites. So you can collect your army there. You can go back to the screen. You're ready to attack. Uh, you go out with your leader from the city and you want to attack. There's, for example, one enemy. So you attack the enemy and then you go in the battle. And this is uh, with the assets that we had, it's put together in uh, like three days with animations. So can already present some idea. You have better, like, oh, okay, I've seen something like this. Okay, this gameplay seems uh, interesting. Or maybe, oh, I'm not interested in this. So, you know, helps better understand. So, yeah, you go back in the map. Uh, there's, for example, other uh, screens that we have at the moment. But uh, hopefully, in a couple months, we'll have a much better version we'll, with uh, readier assets. And it will be more the visual vertical slice that is by the definition. But yeah, that's uh, our experience. And if you have any questions. Also, I'm going to post uh, those links in the chat on YouTube. Yeah. Hey, hey uh, well, uh, thank you for the presentation. Uh, there's something, well, maybe I, I haven't uh, understood completely the, the concept of visual vertical yeah. slice, but there, the, there's something. Uh, do you know about those uh, game ads where they make you feel like you are playing the game? Uh, the, um, it's actually like uh, an animated GIF. Uh, everything is uh, completely hard hardwired, but uh, they uh, gave you the illusion that you can click some button but they aren't uh, uh, handling any way any other action. But it feels, if you click there, actually, it feels like the next thing you see is because you have clicked that button. And they let you, for instance, make an attack in a strategy game, something like that. I, I was thinking that uh, that uh, visual vertical, vertical slice, it's applicable to, to marketing as well. Um, if I understood the question correctly, um, there is a concept where, you, uh, where the player can interact and you, ju and you make them feel like they're interacting with the game? Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure if this is entirely that. This is more of uh, a presentation. 
of a game. So um, you're not supposed to interact in the game, like in this visual vertical slice. It's not interactive, but it is rendered in the engine. Uh, so you can show it visually. Mm -hmm. so and I, I don't know about that concept with making yeah, players well, feel like they're. Yeah. Yeah, the, the question was, yeah, more, more or less if, if, if you find this could be uh, applicable once the game is made in yeah. order to, to create uh, interesting advertisements or something like that. Oh, okay, I see. So like advertis interactive advertisement. Yeah. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah that's, uh, that's a cool idea. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Okay, I'm, I'm going to post uh, the links that I referred to in the chat. Is there any question from the stream? Yeah. Oops. Okay, I'm going to post probably after the presentation. <laughs> but I'm, but they'll be in the chat, so if you go, you're not going to find them. <laughs> Someone is asking you when they can expect to free Janice. When we can expect to free Janice? Well, I don't know. It's a, it's a tough one. Uh, no comment. <laughs> thank you. Yeah, thank you, everyone.